Okay, so uh, here we are underneath Project Turbo LS. So I just finished uh, figuring out uh, the fuel gauge and fuel sending unit, as you guys can see here. So what I did is I just basically, instead of getting the uh, the generic uh, 240, 33 ohm sender, I just opted to get the factory Ford Fairlane, or I mean not Fairlane, Fairmont Thunderbird Mustang sender proportionality the float is designed for the proper uh, sweep in this particular tank here so this is the factory Thunderbird 76 liter tank according to the uh, internet um, so basically what I did is as you guys can see here I just put a little sump on there or welded a piece of angle and then we uh, soldered everything tight and uh, so it's sealed hopefully you can see that and again here's my number 10 line going to our uh, Magna Fuel 750 pump, 4303. So this thing should be pretty pretty good. And we got our uh, pre-filter there, 100 micron, and then our post-filter here, 10 micron. So, uh, and of course, our number six PTFE line going to our fuel rail. And then up here we have our uh, PTFE return line coming from the other side of the fuel rail or actually it's uh, yeah the same it's the return anyways so we got a return in this tank number six all the way to the uh, fuel rail front of the car going through the uh, subframe connector here as you guys can see and uh, we've got a relay over on that side let me just uh, get over here I'll show you so we've got a relay right there and right now I just got it uh, triggered with a white wire that you guys can see that's a key on so just to test this system and I did test it and I'll show you I'll put another scene in here where you can see 60 psi at the rails which is what we need to run the Terminator X Max ECM uh, the instructions say you gotta have a return fuel system in there and this is what we've got here so again magna fuel 4303 pump they say this thing's good for a thousand horsepower so we'll see should be fine and we got number 10 going in I know everybody's saying you should go number eight out but the thing is the bottleneck in the system I'm using is the actual uh, fuel feed inlet because it's actually when I measured it with the uh, vernier it's only 250 a quarter inch in ID and the number six PTFE line is actually 350 so we're fine with the number six going to our fuel rails. And I just wanted to use factory. So I wanted to see how far we can go with a factory truck style uh, fuel rails and uh, regulator built in. And it's good for boost and vacuum. So as, a, as the fuel pressure goes up, it'll increase our, uh, I mean, as the boost goes up, sorry, it'll increase our fuel pressure one to one. So I'm just using a factory truck system in Project Turbo LS. So I wanted to see if it's gonna be enough for 800 horse or whatever the case is. I think it should be, but we'll see. So anyway, so that's why we're just using number six. My good buddy James gave me these uh, this line for free because I helped him out with his uh, 2,000 horsepower uh, Jeep uh, Trackhawk, first uh, turbocharged Trackhawk in the world, twin turbo. So he gave me this uh, line. He had lying around, so that's why I'm using it because it's free. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so the line ID is uh, 0.355, and the ID of our fuel rail factory truck is fee is 0.250 so the bottleneck is at the factory truck uh, fuel rail so this line should be fine and uh, like I said it was given to me so uh, I'm using it and again the number 10 coming from our tank right here and we've actually got a vent here too magna fuel guys say you gotta have a really good vent but uh, well, as I dumped the, the uh, fuel out of this tank so I could uh, manipulate our sending unit because I had to program it because I've got the fuel bridge auto meter because the uh, top position on our resistance is or, or full is uh, 10 ohms and empty is 85 ohms so it's kind of an oddball uh, resistance range sending unit so you, you, it's hard to get a gauge unless it's a factory four gauge so I got an aftermarket equus gauge so but with the fuel bridge it allows us to uh, we can program it and it's learning so it'll, it'll you have to have somebody underneath the car 
and put the uh, sending unit out of the tank in full position and then you have to enter that information in the fuel bridge but I'll go over that uh, when I show you what I've done inside the car there. So again guys here's the uh, modified uh, rear end you guys probably saw this in previous scenes 8.8 .8, 355 gears uh, I water jet I water jet plate the water jet cut a plate welded on the axle so we're just using the factory uh, the hell is that? Ford Explorer disc brakes up so we kind of got an 8.8 .8 Mustang with the smaller tubes 31 spline axles inside but I modified it to use the uh, I bought it, got a rear end from the junkyard and we're just using the uh, disc brake setup from a from a Ford Explorer so that's you know a cheap way to do it just get two rear ends for a couple hundred bucks and uh, it'll save you thousands uh, in dollars in uh, upgrading uh, for a five lug and also uh, a brake system setup so I'm just using factory shit that's modified you know a lot cheaper and of course we have our Team Z suspension, upper and lower double adjustable. And if you guys can see that, yeah, right there. Yeah, so this is the double adjustable. Then we got our, our Morasso drag springs in there. So they should work pretty good. But again, uh, we'll see how everything works when we get this thing together. Those wires there that you see, that's from the old uh, uh, computerized dash for the fuel. And it, it just doesn't work anymore. So that's why I had to get an aftermarket gauge in there with an aftermarket sending unit, figure everything out. And uh, yeah, we got to see what our fuel system is. And again, guys, here's our uh, batteries from in the back. So we got the battery cables going through this sub this subframe connector on this side, and our fuel lines going through that guy on that side. So kind of separated. And here's our muffler, it's just hanging low. I gotta I gotta reattach it over there. So I just had to. I did some, like I said, when I hook up the Terminator X Max, I gotta have access to the hole in the uh, firewall, or not the firewall, the transmission tunnel. So we'll, uh, we'll put everything back once we got the Terminator X Max uh, hooked up and installed. So here's yeah here's the uh, Team Z double adjustable lower arm and then uh, there's the, I don't know if you guys can see this but that's the upper arm with the uh, relocation instant center relocation that's what this guy is here hard to see yeah there that's a better view right here. Yeah, this is the instant center relocation, so this thing should hook pretty good with all this stuff here. And again, the Morasso drag springs. So, uh, again, factory tank modified. And that's the uh, Ford Fairmont Amazon sending unit for like $60 or something, I can't even remember. And I also had to buy that uh, pigtail right there from NPD because I discovered when I tried to program the uh, fuel bridge before, it was the old pigtail. It was short, it, it didn't work, so I thought I thought the bridge was screwed, but it's actually it was the pigtail it wasn't uh, there was no continuity, so I got a new pigtail, figured everything out, now everything works. Fuel sending unit. Um, I had some trouble with my uh, digital gauge in the uh, in the car. I did a previous video when I hooked it up and it read empty, but upon putting fuel in it, it wasn't uh, corresponding with the amount of fuel in the tank and the gauge didn't read that properly so what I've done is I've just bought a factory Ford sending unit for about $66 from Amazon and I just want to verify the ohm range on this particular sending unit uh, I, the reason I bought a factory one is because the float and the float arm is the correct length for this particular fuel tank it's a Fox body fuel tank right there the car's up on the lift right now so uh, you would not so the arm length is correct and the float level is correct so we just want to verify now our ohm reading. So right now, this would be the position with uh, no fuel in the tank. And as you guys can see on the uh, on our multimeter there, it says 85 ohms. So when you raise this arm up, simulating a full tank, it says 10. So again, so 10 full, and let's just see here. Yeah, so 10 full, and then it's gonna go to about 83 empty, or should be 85. So let's just say 10 to 80. So and also what I've done is I bought the auto meter fuel bridge. So this allows you to use any fuel gauge with any sending unit and it's program programmable. So basically, yeah, part number 9109 fuel bridge from auto meter from Summit Racing again. I think I paid about 65 uh, US for this thing. So we'll use this and we'll use our factory sending unit there. Hopefully it'll work. Now there is a wiring diagram here, as you guys can see. So basically, 
to, the fuel bridge is the only thing now that hooks up to our sending unit. So all the other wires, positive, key on, and ground will go to the fuel bridge. And as you guys can see here, I hope you can see that, there's just one wire that goes to the, uh, to the, our gauge. And uh, the reason I think it also didn't work before is that I didn't have a negative on the sending unit. I just had a positive, so it wasn't reading correctly. So now we're going to do a negative on the sending unit itself. So again, guys, that's, uh, hopefully you can see this. It's about 85 empty. And 10 full, so that's our ohm range. So basically, I read through the instructions pretty quick. Uh, and right here it gives us option numbers so we can program this thing pretty fast so what you do is you look for your range and as we just verified our range is from uh, 10 to 85 and we can see on the chart here number two option is 0 to 90 so then we go to our fuel bridge once it's hooked up and we uh, push the up and down buttons right here until we get to our option Hey guys, just another scene here, Project Turbo LS. I just installed the uh, Bosch 044 equivalent knockoff Chinese pump. So it's as loud as hell. So here's a quick, uh, quick audio demonstration how loud this goddamn thing is. So as you can hear, it's way too loud. So we're gonna show you here, hang on. So as you heard it there, way too loud. So we're gonna uh, we're not gonna be using that pump. Okay, guys, just shooting another scene here, Project Turbo LS. Uh, what we're doing, or what I did, is I just fabricated up this uh, fuel pump mount, as you see, with a relay, and uh, that little plate there, that's so I can ground the relay. So I uh, installed that, and uh, just doing the wiring. Right now, kind of looks a little bit messy, but uh, it's fine. Of course, we have our uh, 30 amp fuse in line coming from the red 10 gauge wire from the switch. So if anything happens, we can, we got double safety. So we got the switch over there that, we, that shuts off all power to the car. And then of course we got our 30 amp fuse that powers the, the pump and our relay right here. And that white wire, that's our key on. So as soon as we hit the key on, we, we initiate our pump so we can have uh, fuel going to our fuel rails and the car will start. So again, guys, just uh, welded up, fabricated a bracket. We've got the uh, the 4303 Pro Tuner pump, uh, good for 120 PSI. So that uh, that should feed this LS, no matter what boost level we have. Um, I will show you the pump in the next scene and I'll put it together with the uh, pre and post filter. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, we Okay, guys, so here's our pump. Magnafuel. Magnafuel 750. So it's a number 8 ORB in with a seal you're supposed to use and a number 8 ORB out. There's the outlet, as you can see. Outlet, it says. And this is our inlet right here. Again, Magnafuel Pro Tuner 750 pump. This was $600 compared to the Osias. Bosch 044 knockoff that I had for $70. So we got a real pump here. And according to the instructions, magnet fuel. So this thing uh, says not to be used, should not be used with methanol. Anyways, not a big deal because we're just going to run gas. Uh, so the 4303 MP, MP4303, which this guy is, it says 2000 horsepower, 45 PSI. So it'll of course be less in our situation, but we don't care. We're not gonna get 2000 horsepower. We're lucky if we get seven or 800. So that's, we're not too worried. So, and again, we're running about 58 to 60 PSI because that's what the uh, 
factory truck intake fuel pressure regulator is set at from the factory. So we're, we're a little bit higher, higher pressure, so it'll be fine. Uh, again, so uh, yeah, when they want to vent on here, they recommend a, uh, according to the instructions, a fuse, 30 amp, 25 amp. Uh, Pro tuner series pump should be wired using a 10 to, 10 to 12 gauge wire. Uh, the relay should be mounted with good ground source. Pro tuner series also requires a 25 to 30 amp fuse in addition to the relay. Relays are recommended but not required. So, so I think we're pretty good. Got everything that they recommend, so we should have no problems. And as you saw, as you saw in a previous scene, we've got everything hooked up. We just got to uh, put this thing together. So here you go, guys. Uh, so first thing is we want uh, actually we want to screw our post fill pre filter into this. So we'll just use this fitting here. So this is a number eight with a O ring on there, and that's the number ten right here with an O ring. So just put this guy in there like so. So the O-rings are doing all the sealing here, guys. Hopefully, well, hopefully that's the plan anyways. So just snug that guy down. And then we got our pre-filter arrow. It says which way our, our flow goes. This is just a cheap uh, Chinese uh, 100 micron pre-filter I picked up from eBay. And again, here's our fitting. So O-ring on this side, and this is gonna be our AN line that comes from the tank. So we don't need an O-ring there because it seals on a 45 degree taper. Snug that guy. Okay, that's good. That's good. So now, here's our post filter. So I've already got the fitting in there. I just used, uh, basically, I'm gonna show you here. So a number eight AN, and we just O-ringed it because it didn't have the uh, proper one in stock. So we got an O-ring on this side too, that screws in. So we'll put this guy on. So this is like a hundred dollar pump, I mean filter, and this guy is a forty dollar from Amazon. So basically, oh, they're all everything's made in China. But I was there, so I didn't want to fuck around. So we're good. That guy's good. And we're gonna go number six because my buddy James gave me a whole bunch of number six PTFL line. So we're just gonna go number six out to the rails, which is fine because the rails, are, the uh, inlet of the rail is not much bigger than that, so there won't be a bottleneck. So that, that number six is snug. This is the number eight. That's just gonna go into our pump here. So that's our post filter, this is 10 micron. Pre filter actually is 100 micron, so those are bigger, bigger particles than this guy here. So I just want to make sure that this seals, so I'm just going to blow through it. Yep, perfect. So now we're just going to screw this guy into here. Like so. Well, hopefully it screws in, we'll see. Yep, there we go. And look at the arrow here with the flow, so it's going this way, just to make sure. I'm just gonna blow through here to make sure. Yep, no problem. Yep, can't blow. I blew both ways, so we have, there's no air seepage anywhere, so that's good. So again, guys, here's our pre-filter, 100 micron, our fuel pump. As you can see here, Magna Fuel Pro Tuner 750, and our post filter, 10 micron, so the injectors don't get plugged up. And then we've got our line, and I'll show you that once I install it. You saw the mount, so basically what happens is these two threaded holes here, that little bracket, you put two fasteners on the other side of the bracket, screws into here, so it'll be under the car. And I'll probably support, well actually the, the, uh, the braided steel fuel lines will actually support it from the six and the number 10, so it'll be fine. And that's a fully welded bracket, so it's pretty, pretty rigid. So again, guys, there we go, so we got post, Pre-filter, pump, and then post-filter.
Okay guys, so we got a uh, fuel pump mounted and we got it wired up. He's showing you the wiring. I'm gonna put some loom on this stuff so it's gonna look a little bit better. We've got our fuse up here. And I basically wrote fuse there so uh, we know where it is. Well, of course we know where it is, but just in case I sell the car, I don't know where the fuse is for the fuel pump. And here's the wiring. Everything's hooked up, the relay works good. We got our wires up to the pump here. As you can see, there's our mount, mounting bolts. I hope you can see that. And they're there. And our 90 degree fitting here that will go to our line. That goes to the fitting over there. We'll build a line probably tomorrow or tonight. We'll see how it goes. And then I'll put another scene in here when we uh, turn the key, see how this thing sounds. See if it's loud or quiet or whatever the case may be. Hopefully it's quieter on the quieter side, which it should be because that's what I read in our view, reviews. So we'll see because my holly pump on the van, that's super quiet, really nice. So, so yeah, so here we go. Pump is installed and wired, relays on, fuse is in. And then we'll put some loom on this stuff to make it just give us some more protection and uh, go from there. Okay hey guys, so I've got the fuel line made up here at number 10 AN, steel braided uh, hose, so we got pretty good. We've got a 45 degree fitting here and we've got a 90 degree fitting here. So the way to do this is to, and to minimize uh, line stress is basically figure out a routing, get your length, and then basically put it where you're going to put it and uh, we'll tighten up this uh, tie here. As, and you can see, nothing is tight here, so this is all these are loose and so is this guy and then the, what will happen is it'll take the most natural position same here so this, see how it's this is this is actually swiveled a bit and then same with this guy so this is the most natural position that these uh, these fitting ends are going to be in so we'll tighten them right here and that's after i tightened our our tie here good. Now we'll go to this guy here. I did oil these threads so they go on smooth. There we go. Good. Looks good. It's close to the tank. This is good. Double check here. Okay, so that's good. Now we can just, uh, you know what, maybe I'll put another one up just in case. Two twist ties, just to hold it. Two. There we go guys, here's our fuel line coming from the tank to our pump and uh, inline filter. This is a 100 micron right here, that's a 10. So pre-filter, post-filter and our Magna Fuel 750 uh, pump all wired. And so now what we got to do is we got to put the lines going to our fuel rails of our factory uh, truck intake manifold. So we'll uh, be working on that too. Well, we might shoot a scene or not, we'll see. Okay guys, so from previous scenes I may have alluded to the fact that we're going to be using uh, number 6 PTFE uh, rated uh, line to feed our uh, fuel rail here. So a lot of guys are saying, well, number 6 is too small. Well, it is pretty small, but you have to realize that our feed line here, if you measure the inside diameter, it's only, what is that, 260 thousandths of an inch in diameter. So it's gonna be a bottleneck anyways, 
Luckily, we have the big capacity fuel rails here that can basically hold a lot of fuel. So basically, that'll supply enough fuel at the instant it's needed. And of course, we have our little quarter inch return here. And this one ID is only 180 thousandths of an inch. Again, this guy here is 260. And the ID of our PTFE line, which I'll show you in a minute how to put one of those fittings together, is 355 thousandths. So the PTFE number six is actually about a hundred thousand bigger ID than our feed line. So as you can see from that, uh, those numbers, number six is basically the most that we, we need to feed this uh, fuel rail. If we had number eight, it'd be totally a waste of time. So if we do step up and we go to number eight, of course I'm gonna put bigger rails, bigger everything. And then uh, we go, we'll go to number eight. But for now, Project Turbo LS, we're just using the factory truck intake with our boost compensated fuel pressure regulator. We want to see how far we can go with that combination running our Pro Tuner 750 uh, fuel pump in back. So again, uh, we'll see how this all works out. And uh, that's the reason we're just going to go number six, PTFE. And also the fact that my buddy James gave it to me for free. So let's just try it since we got it. Okay, hey guys, so what we got here is we got our uh, our Russell Quick Connect fittings. EFI fitting 6AN male to 3 8 uh, OD ferrule push on. So that's this guy here. That's for the for the feed line. As you can see here, it just pushes on to the, the factory setup we have there. This is the feed, the 3 8 And this guy here, this is the 5 16 return line. So basically what happens is this just basically threads right into our number sixes. So it'll be a nice, clean, easy install. And they're quick, quick connects. So you can get these and use these with a, either your factory uh, fuel rail system. Okay guys, so uh, basically these things are feed and are return are ready. I did clean these up with some steel wool. So they're nice and clean and smooth. No nicks, no scratches, no nothing like that. So this guy here is our feed, 3 8 so that goes on like this. See how this works here. Do that click. Yeah, it's pretty good. And this is our 5 16 return line. So this guy goes on. Let's see how this goes on. On there. Yeah, it's on there. That guy's on. And in the package, they do give you instructions. If these things are equally spaced or they look like they're centered, that means there's good, uh, good contact there. So it shouldn't leak. So hopefully, well, we'll see, right? So to figure out the length of our line meat, I'm just going to feed this one end through the uh, frame connector. So that's where the lines are going to sit. And then uh, hook it up to the, uh, the fitting and see what we got for length. a quick look so we just screwed it on there see that we screwed it on there and now what we will do jack this car back up again and we'll uh, basically at the back end over the differential we'll make sure that that we have the proper rod into the pump and then we'll mark it cut it take it out of the car again and put the other fitting on okay guys so as you can see we're inside the car here here's our fuel gauge it's an equus unit uh, I forget the part number anyways, uh, and there's our fuel bridge. 
on the right side there. And I'll just go through uh, the wiring, how you wire this, because the writing is really small. So this is our 12 volt positive or key on. That's a ground, the black one. Second, second one from the end. That is from the sender. So the sending unit that's in the tank. And this guy here now goes to our gauge. So the sending unit wire does not go to the gauge anymore. It's this last one now that goes to the goes to our gauge on the S position behind on the back. So basically I set this up with an assistant underneath the car with a float out of the uh, tank and I had the, the assistant hold the float in the full position or the highest position and what you do then is you basically hit enter and make sure that correspondingly the needle is on full and then the fuel bridge will flash at three and that means three quarter full and then you have to manipulate those two micro switches right here and then basically what happens is you move the, it moves the needle to the three quarter position once that's confirmed you hit enter then a two will flash on this LED that means half a tank then you manipulate the two switches so the needle indicates half hit enter and then a one will flash and you manipulate the, the two micro switches so it's at a the needle is at a quarter tank and then after that finally it'll say E and then you manipulate the needle with the two micro switches to the E position and at that time you have to tell your assistant to put the float in the lowest possible position on your sending unit therefore uh, basically we have a correspondence with the float and the gauge so the gauge now is on E the float is on E and the fuel fuel bridge knows that the float is at the lowest position and then you hit enter and then you basically hit enter again for two seconds and that completes the programming of the fuel bridge for a custom sender. And a, and a custom gauge. So basically that's what I did. So anyways now guys, so I'll, I'll turn the key on and you can see the gauge now. There's about a quarter tank of gas, hopefully we can see this. So it'll, it'll sweep to full. Like that. And then it'll move down. Sorry about the radio. So now, as you guys can see here, it's about a quarter full. So that, that's about right now. So now we've got our gauge with our with our non, you know, it's a kind of a custom sending unit because it's a Ford unit. It's not one of those uh, 240, 33 or the, those standard ones you can buy from Autometer. So anyways, uh, yeah, so that's all figured out now. So we've got quarter tank in there. And uh, I'll try to do this in one take, so I'll, I'll, I'll put the uh, fuel pump on so you guys can hear it. And I'll bring, take the camera outside and we'll look at the fuel pressure on the rails, okay? So it's kind of noisy, but we'll see. And this is also a good little video to gauge the sound of the, the Pro Tuner Magna Fuel 4303 fuel pump. So I'll go to... So we got fuel in the tank, as you just saw again fuel gauge will sweep back to quarter because that's where it is. We'll go out of the car here and uh, go over. I got a pressure gauge on our thing here and as you guys can see, hopefully you can see that, yeah 60 psi. I think yeah that's 60 because the middle is 50. So we got 60 psi at our at our fuel rail here, which is exactly what we want. Because these injectors, or the ECM, will work on six, because I got a fuel transducer here to basically feed to our, to our Holly Terminator X Max to tell us what the fuel pressure is. So we got 60, so that's good. Come around to this side. Sorry about the camera work, guys. But again, we wanted to use the factory stock rails, stock everything. Uh, here's our, this is our inlet right here. And this is our return. So using a factory with a with a factory truck regulator. So this is good for boost too. As the boost comes in, it'll boost comes in one psi. It'll raise our fuel pressure one psi. That's exactly what we want. Or again, PTFE lines. We got the quick disconnects here. This is the feed. That's the return. Both number six. Let me just go turn this off. Hang on. It's actually not that loud, so it's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll talk a little bit about uh, more about the fuel rail here. So everybody's worried about this being only a number six, but the truth is uh, the number six ID is 350 thousandths of an inch, and this line right here for a feed for a fuel system, it's only quarter inch or 250 ID. So the bottleneck is actually right here. So uh, not to worry, so our number six will be adequate. And again, we're running 60 PSI, so we have a lot of fuel going to this thing. So again, there's our factory system, factory truck intake with our uh, built-in regulator. You can go get this at the junkyard, dirt cheap setup. So we'll just see how far this can go running on this, running on our uh, 76, 75 uh, billet wheel turbo over there. So here's our fuel system figured out. So basically the next step is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to hook up the Terminator X Max and uh, got our fans in there. Hook up the Terminator X Max ECM and then uh, see if this thing starts. Uh, see how it goes. So yeah, so anyways guys, I just want to do a video on fuel systems for any boosted application. Uh, I'm running the Magna Fuel 4303 fuel pump again, Pro Tuner 750. And uh, again, factory uh, truck intake with the built-in regulator. So this, this basically eliminates a lot of cost. Uh, because it's, it's just factory stuff and of course here's our three bar or 2.5 bar GM map center and I've got that pigtail that goes to the, that just plugs right into the to our uh, let's see here to our Terminator X Max here so that's our 2.5 GM map center so there's an option on, a, on our when we program our ECM to use that exact uh, uh, map center and I will go over that again too when I program it and get everything working and again, our 1500 injectors, as you guys can see there, 1500 cc's. So, uh, so yeah, so it's kind of a cheaper setup, but uh, we'll see if it works. And uh, we can save some money and still have good power. And everybody's going to wonder, how oh, is that thing running so good with a factory setup? Well, we'll see how good it runs. Okay, so this guy's is a EV1 type fuel injector. This happens to be a 1500 cc unit. 150 pounds per hour. This guy here to the left of the EV1, that's actually an early truck or Maltec 2. I thought it was an EV6, but I was mistaken. So that's that's the early truck, 24.5 pounds per hour. That's the rating that these guys have. This came off of a 6 liter, 2003. And of course, in Project Turbo LS, we're replacing it with the 1500s here, the Chinese style cheap injectors we'll see how they work uh, see if we can get the car running and everything so uh, we'll use those for now and again so I'll show you on my computer here the EV6 style connector that's actually this guy here that's an EV6 so I was mistaken thinking that the Multec 2 the early truck one the shorter one I just showed you was the EV6 so the EV6 is kind of like the EV1 but it's just it's it it has radiuses on the rectangle versus just being sharp and square like the EV1 and here's another picture of a, a Chinese type EV1 connector you see that how they look so uh, yeah so that's EV6 right there and right above it we have an EV1 you see how it's squarish so uh, so yeah that's the difference between types of types of injectors and these are the one this is how you choose your Terminator X Max system because it's you get the harness for your specific injectors. Now that being said, if you find one on the uh, internet, you can just get adapters to make it work with any eject injectors. So, uh, so yeah, so just make sure you have the right harness, and you can and the part numbers correspond with the Terminator X, uh, depending on what kind of injectors you have. I happen to, well, that's that's the factory uh, Maltec two. This is the EV1s I'm using now in my intake manifold. I posted a previous video on YouTube when I installed these. So yeah, so uh, so the uh, Terminator X Max system I got was for the EV1 type injectors. Okay, guys. So that uh, there's another series of scenes: fuel pump, fuel system, fuel setup, fuel tank uh, sending unit. So anyway, so that's uh, that seems to have worked pretty good. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's been a little bit of a long process because it took me a little while to figure out that uh, sending unit and the fuel bridge and all that kind of thing. But anyways, fuel gauge is good now, so now we can go ahead and hook up our Terminator X Max ECM, hook everything else up, and I'll document that procedure too. So yeah, so that's a fuel system, intake manifold, fuel lines, fuel pump. That's all hooked up. So uh, 
it's coming along slowly guys in the ages of COVID here. So anyways guys, uh, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. If you like and subscribe, much, it's much appreciated. And hopefully we can help some people out uh, with this build here. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.